Population changes can have a huge effect on the demand for scarce resources, so it's really useful if we're able to predict what's likely to happen to the population of a country over the next few years. And an important part of doing that is logarithms. But we'll see that logarithms have many other uses and we'll explore some of those in future programs. In many industries, there exist firms of very different sizes, sharing the market and competing with each other. So it's not always the case that bigger means more efficient. Sometimes the smaller firms thrive in competition with giants. How do they do this? One good example can be found in the mountains of Colorado. You're looking at gold, but not very much of it. Less than one ounce for every hundred tons of rock. But this company at Cripple Creek is taking these large volumes of ore and refining it to get the gold. It takes large amounts of capital equipment, lots of people, so lots of inputs of resources in order to generate the output of gold that it produces. Well, we're mining is a low-grade ore. To make that economic, we need to move lots of material very quickly and very efficiently. Right now, we've got 10 of the large Euclid Hitachi 300-ton capacity trucks. That's our main uh, hauling equipment. Um, we also have four shovels, four hydraulic shovels that match up with those trucks. We operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We employ about 325 people. We're not finding here veins like you see in the movies or big nuggets. What we find is gold that's very finely disseminated through the rock. So what we do is we crush that rock to maximize our surface area. Then we put it on a lined leach facility, a valley that we've got a double and triple liner system in and then we drip a dilute sodium cyanide solution over that and the sodium cyanide actually dissolves the gold and silver that's on the surface of that rock. Um, right now we're producing about 330,000 ounces of gold annually and right around 100,000 ounces of silver annually. By contrast, we've come to Hendricks Calais Resources, where Tom Hendricks approaches mining in a very different way. What's the logic to take the easiest bits first and start there and then come to the more difficult, awkward to get at bits later? Right, we're going to be putting down a little truck, underground truck ramp called a decline from right out here at the portal, and we're going to be working on the veins here to begin with, but eventually we're going to sink a 3,000 foot shaft on Caribou Hill and that'll have tunnels radiating off the bo bottom of it for one mile in each direction. We have a total of 33 separate veins right in this area and they're underneath us here. They're all under that hill um, and we've drilled down to a depth of 2,500 feet below here and they're going right on down. Uh, this tunnel goes in 1,800 feet and uh, where you were down in Cripple Creek and you saw these big 300 ton trucks, we haul our ore in these little track cars. And uh, the little train there is battery powered, so we go in and out all day on a battery powered train. But how do you hope to make any money if you're taking these little trucks along? And the guys we were looking at uh, uh, the other day are moving thousands of tons of the stuff every day. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good point, and it's why uh, many of the major mining companies have gone to the lower grade, but they move a tremendous volume of rock. But what we're looking at is moving uh, 200 tons a day of of ore from the veins when we build our new mine. We'll be mining a half an ounce of gold and eight ounces of silver per ton. Well, you may have noticed that gold and silver prices have skyrocketed recently. So we're looking at mining ore that might have a value of about four to five hundred dollars per ton. We're looking at a total cost to make the metal through the smelter at about sixty-seven dollars a ton. So it could be very profitable for us. How is it that both these mines, with such different scales of production, can be efficient? 
The answer lies in the nature of the production process. Big firms use lots of capital and labour to produce output. Smaller ones use less labour and capital to produce smaller volumes of output. One might assume that as a company grows and uses more factors, efficiency would rise. But in gold mining, this isn't always so. In gold mining, large firms and small firms may be equally efficient because of the relationship between inputs and outputs. We call this relationship the production function. Production for the large mine can only be profitable at a large scale because the ore they mine contains relatively little gold. The small mine is only profitable at a smaller scale because the deposits of concentrated gold are much smaller and more difficult to reach. Two firms, same industry, at very different points on the production function. You're operating in some ways less riskily. You know that for every hundred tons of uh, rock you're going to get some gold. These guys uh, are never very sure whether they're going to find anything or not. <laughs> Correct. Well, I think that they, you know, that there, there is a little bit more risk, but there's also less investment in terms of their capital investment. With those underground miners, they need to really zero in on those areas where they've got that higher grade ore and get that out as efficiently as they can. It's really more like an Indiana Jones adventure. <laughs> We're using modern day drilling and 3D computer technology and modeling programs and everything to predict what's here. But in the end, it's still a very high risk, unknown thing. But I guess what makes it so fascinating is you always have that opportunity to hit the big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Is that part of what keeps you going? Oh, it is. <laughs> we'll develop this idea further using maths for an industry where the production functions are well understood. Let's take an example from the oil industry. An oil company wishes to transport its oil through oil pipes at the lowest possible cost. So how big should the diameter of the pipe be? If you have a bigger diameter, you need more pumping equipment to push the oil through. If you doubled the diameter of the pipe and doubled the horsepower pushing that oil through, what would happen to the throughput of oil? It's the mathematics of production functions which enables us to answer that question and so help to understand how to minimise the cost of transporting oil.